The cost in dollars of making x items is given by the function c of x is equal to 10x plus 500. The fixed cost is determined when zero items are produced. So letter A is asking us to find the fixed cost for this item. All right, so this one isn't that bad, right? So for letter A here, let's write it down. Let's just write down the original function, okay? C of x is equal to 10, 10x plus 500, right? Where C of x, or basically C, represents the cost, okay, of making x items, okay? So uh, this value over here will represent the total cost, and x here represents the number of items. So it tells us that the fixed cost is determined when, and this is economics, right? When zero items are produced. So how would you then find the fixed cost, C? Simple, just plug in zero for x, right? Because whatever this function turns out to be when x is zero tells us the cost of producing no items. And you might say to yourself, this sounds weird. That would equal 500, by the way. You might say, well, that sounds weird. How could it be $0 to, to produce nothing? Well, consider yourself a store owner, okay? And you have leased the store. You pay rent to a landowner, okay? You own a pizzeria. If nobody comes in the door, do you think your landlord cares? Probably not. Well, he might because he might have to find a new tenant soon. But uh, he still wants his payment or she still wants her payment, okay? So that's the idea of a fixed cost, something that doesn't change based on the uh, volume of productivity. No matter if you produce one pizza, zero pizzas, five million pizzas, your rent will roughly be the same, okay? I know there's other arrangements that could be had between landowners and, and business owners. However, uh, let's just assume that they, they're not gonna take a percent of profits or anything like that. So uh, that takes care of letter A. Um, letter B. What do we have here? So now it says, what is the cost of making 25 items? All right, so we have again our function. The cost will be equal to 10 multiplied by the number of items produced plus basically our fixed cost of $500. This is like the rent, okay? And this would be the cost of like each pizza, let's say. So 25, the cost of making 25 pizzas is going to be 10 times 25 plus 500. Okay, so this is then going to be C of X is equal to, this is work, going to work out to 250 plus 500. So this is now equal to 750, all right, dollars. So as you can see, um, you know, the, now if you only produced, you know, uh, 25 uh, pizzas in this certain amount of time, right, give it a month or whatever, the total cost then of the in, you know the entire thing would be your rent plus then the cost of the pizzas of two hundred and fifty dollars to give you a total cost of seven hundred and fifty. Okay, um, this question by the way could possibly be I'm just thinking about it. It could possibly be interpreted as you know um, you would just take ten multiply it by twenty five and say the cost of producing twenty five items would be two hundred and fifty dollars. It. You could make an argument there because, I mean, if you really think about the economics of it, that, that might be valid. I'm just going based off of the question. It says the cost in dollars of making X items is given by this function. So based on what they're telling me, this would be the answer. Although I I do understand if you, if you had a slightly different perspective. Um, and then it says, last, suppose the maximum cost allowed is $1,500. All right. What is the domain and range of the cost function? Okay. So why don't we do this? Uh, again, we have our cost function, right? The cost of an I, the cost of producing this uh, number of items is equal to this equation, basically, right? 10x plus 500. So now let's plug in the maximum cost. All right, let's see what will that tell us if I plug in 1500 here. What would this tell us? Well, if I solve this for x, right, by subtracting 500 from this side, subtracting 500. This would be 1,000 is now equal to 10x and divide both sides by 10. So x is equal to 100. Basically, what it tells us is that if our maximum cost is $1,500, that means our maximum number of items, this is the max number of items, right, produced or maximum number of pizzas is 100. Okay, so let's make a little uh, table. 
we're going to say the minimum. So we have here, let's do this. Let's do, we have our items. Let, let's just say our pizzas, right? Our pizzas, or actually, you know, let me just use the word item because that's what you can think of it as pizzas. So you have, we have our items and then we have our costs. Okay, those are the two things that are represented in this function. We also have certain minimum and maximum values for them, minimum and max. So let me ask you a question. What's the minimum, oops, what is the minimum number of items that can be produced? Well, zero, right? You can make no pizzas. But what's your minimum costs going to be? Total costs, not zero. That was the whole point of part A. Your minimum cost is going to be 500. If you produce nothing, you're still going to have to pay the rent of $500. What's the maximum number of items you can produce? Well, that's what we just found, 100. And what's the maximum cost that you will experience? 1,500. Okay. So now, which of these two terms, items or costs, is your is considered the independent variable given this function? Right? Well, it's considered the x value, all right? So this would be the independent variable, and this would now be the dependent variable. Remember, uh, you can think about it that way, or you can realize that this is basically x, and that's basically y, all right? The domain always talks about the set of values the independent variable can obtain, and the range always talks about the, num uh, the uh, set of numbers that the dependent variable can obtain. So look, I mean, we basically have it, right? So in terms of now just writing this out nicely, I'm just gonna move this part on up a little bit to give myself a little more space. Okay, we can now say that the uh, domain of this particular function will be uh, anywhere from zero items to 100 items. Okay, that's the domain, inclusive of both, because it could be zero and it could be 100. Whereas now the range, okay, is going to be Inclusive of 500, that's your minimum cost, all the way to $1,500, that's your maximum cost. All right, just using the table up here. So guys, I hope that helped, all right? Interesting question. Um, so dealt with some economics here. And um, anyway, hope you liked the video. Please remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.